Hey, I'm Ben Rolo, and I'm going to go over my track Bicycle Day that's just been released on Bay 6 as part of my fluorescent EP. It's out now on all your usual stuff if you want to have a listen. Um, this one came about a little bit differently from my usual stuff. It was stuck as a little loop for a good three months before I decided to go on and finish it. So um, I'll show you how that came about and what made me finish it really. I won't go into the technical stuff too much because I could be here hours explaining it all. But yeah, hopefully there'll be some little nuggets of production information that you find helpful. I mainly start my tunes through templates. Um, most have some kind of drum loop in them just to keep that spark going when I want to write something. Uh, but I mainly use templates, so I already have my sends and buses set up here. If you're not familiar with Ableton, you've got your sends on the right here, on your track, and it will route to the uh, buses or returns just down the bottom here. As you can see, I have a room reverb, FX reverb, parallel compressor, saturation, some uh, stereo kind of stuff with micro shift and a side-chained Vox delay. I won't go into them too much, but yeah, if you want to know more, just leave me a comment or something like that. So I started with these piano chords here. As you can see, they're made on a Contax Maverick which I personally love and use all the time. I actually use the uh, Dirty Old Gram preset for this, which um, I use quite a lot along with the Deep uh, preset for the Maverick. I find they have quite a lot of character. Um, and processing wise, I um, haven't done too much to this, but something I love to use is this Pro Q3, which is a Fab Filter EQ. It's just basically rolling off the sub and kind of adding a bit of a dynamic EQ. Um, then I've got a little C2 compressor, which I basically use on mostly everything apart from my buses. Just a great little thing, I highly recommend it. Um, that's just controlling the peaks. Then I've got this Neutron. Um, which is doing a little bit more, again a bit of multi-band compression and a gate to keep it a bit tighter. A little bit of um, a saturation on the top here as well. And I've also got a little filter. I love my filters just for intros and stuff like that. To create a build up and a little bit of a delay as well. Um, led under it I've also got... A road as well this is again from contact and it's your uh, scarby keys um, both together they gave it quite a nice little uh, texture really I thought the Maverick sounded a bit weak on its own so I'll give that a play After the piano, I added this guitar over the top, which was quite a background element in the original kind of draft of the tune. Um, I ended up bringing it forward. Um, it's not actually sampled or played in. It's from the Lab series with Spitfire Audio. Um, all these instruments are free if you haven't got them. I highly recommend it. I use them in most uh, productions, really. Um, processing wise, the Soundtoys Radiator is a lovely little tool. Um, yeah, I think it's based on an old analog saturator or amp, one of the two, something like that. Um, again, C2 and a bit of glue compression. Um, Guitar Rig 5 as well, um, again from Native Instruments. Really, really nice for guitar. Not only that, you can use it on a lot of other things. Um, and yeah, just a bit of a bit of EQ to cut out the mud and stuff like that, really. And that's kind of it for the guitar. 
I tend to do a lot of uh, drums and effects last in my songs. Um, so next up was the bass on this one. Um, as you can see, this is made in Serum. I pretty much use it for all my basses. Um, and mainly it was based around this sine oscillator here. Um, yeah, it's nothing too special, but I'll play it through. So yeah, as you can tell, no sound design wizard, but it kind of works. It works with the tune. Um, this here is the towel filter too. It's basically an alternative to side chaining, really. So this will come in every time the kick does, um, which I, you could probably just hear just a minute ago. Um, I like to use it just because I find side chaining can sometimes suck the life out of your bass and it can sometimes cause unnecessary clicks and pops and stuff like that um so yeah it works for me it works for my kind of style but you i'm not saying side chaining's wrong um you definitely want to use it on heavier styles and stuff like that i'll also split my bass into two sections as you can see here um this one right here is cutting out the sub and i've saturated the, uh, the low mids with the decapitator, which is my favourite saturation. This kind of helps it come through on smaller speakers, which is, you know, your common trick. Um, and yeah, on the sub, I think I've cut it slightly higher. Yeah, I've cut it to around 280. And that's all in mono. And yeah, it just helps kind of, helps you control the bass a bit more. I think this is the point I'd left it at before, really. I remember getting quite frustrated, I couldn't get the drums to fit. Um, so I left it for a good couple of months and um, yeah, it ended up being my favourite tune from the EP really. So it's a good little learning process to stick with it and yeah, just keep ideas there really. Um, so I kind of fixed it with um, these drums, it kind of made me come round to the idea a little more. I'll give them a little playthrough just so you can hear them all together. As you can hear, I kind of make drums by layering a lot of breaks together. It's probably not the best way in a lot of cases, but it kind of works for me. So that's the kind of thing I stick with. Um, mainly it's just a lot of classic breaks. This one, I don't really know the name, it's not going to lie. Yeah, I don't um, don't really like to process the drums too much individually. As you can see here, a lot have barely anything on, or they just have a few EQs. Um, I like to do my processing kind of on the group or the bus, if you would. Um, yeah, mainly that's by cutting a lot of the mids here, just for that kind of crispy feel. I don't do this much anymore, but I've also side-chained the brakes to the snare. And I've also used a little transient shaper, and I've taken the attack off a lot and a little bit of a, uh, sustain as well. Um, what kind of made the drums come together, though, was this little percussion loop here. Um, I sent it around to a few friends in around October time and I got the same comment from a lot of them that it was lacking a little layer in the drums in the kind of top end. And a big shout out to Charlie Perspective because he sent me this little future music jungle loop here. And yeah, it kind of changed the tune really, really drove the drums and 
yeah, so I can't thank him enough for that. Um, go check out his production videos if you can on his YouTube. Really helpful stuff. I don't want to go into my uh, snare or kick processing too much. Just because there's a million videos out there that are much better than me at explaining it really. Um, but basically for my snare I will make one in Serum and put it in the key of my song which is D major or B flat minor one of the two they're the relatives anyway um, but yeah there's a great video by Artifacts uh, explaining how to make one of these snares in Serum um, but obviously that will sound a bit too synthetic for this kind of tune so I'd go through my sample library up here on Ableton and yeah, I just found a clap and a couple of rim shots to make it a bit more natural and fit with the tune. And the kick, there's nothing too special going on there either. Um, it's basically just two samples. One that's a slightly higher fundamental um, and one that's a slightly lower one. Just around here is the um, parallel compression and the saturation and that's all I really do to the kick. Um, maybe listening back now it's maybe a bit flabby but it works in the mix so I can't really complain. So my favourite part of the tune is the vocal line actually. Um, I think they're from some old Loop Masters packs. I kind of cut them up, and yeah, I'll give it a play without the um, without the pitch down processing on it, so you can just hear what it was before. Baby, I'm so yeah, that was it without um, out the processing on it. Obviously, I've got my delays and all. All that kind of stuff on the uh, on the bus sends, um, but this little thing here, the little altar boy from Sound Toys, is uh, something I use on all vocals really, just to make it a bit more unrecognisable from the original. And I think it actually added something to this vocal. I don't think the original really fit because it's a bit too poppy and all that. But um, yeah, this is kind of pitched down, almost an octave, and I gave it some um, a bit of saturation from the unit itself. I'll give that one a play as well. Yeah, to me that just sounded much better for the kind of song it was. Um, I've got a lot of processing on this one actually. Um, I probably wouldn't do it as much now as, yeah, so there's probably something wrong with the sample if you've got to do it um, this this much, really. Um, yeah, so it just started with, again, the Pro-Q3. It's quite a lot of processing, quite a lot of cuts on that. Um, probably the C2, just to control the peaks. Uh, Neutron, what's this doing? Oh, this even got a gate on it. A bit of dynamic EQ, um, the decapitator just to glue it to the mix a little bit, add a bit of um, top end sparkle um, and the RXD click here because I, like I said I think there was some problems with this um, sample, quite a few pops and stuff like that. So yeah this is a bit of a miracle worker if you find a sample that you love but isn't the best quality really. A little trick I really love to do that makes uh, your vocals come through in a mix um, is to use this feature on Isotopes Neutron. Uh, if you can see it's got the masking feature just here on the EQ section. Um, I usually put one instance of this on the my instrument group so that's usually got pianos, pads, anything that would uh, really clash with a vocal and I'll obviously put one on my vocal. And then it kind of, if you click the masking and click here, it will read the other instances of the plugin. And yeah, it should show you here the 
kind of frequencies that are being masked. So if I give that a play, it should come up. So that really helps the vocals come through a lot more, I feel. So getting to the end of the breakdown, I haven't shown you the FX and pads yet. These again were quite simple really, just something the song needed for a bit of ear candy and a bit of interest throughout. Um, they're all mainly made in Isotopes um, Iris 2. I love this synth, it's a little um, sample based synth. Um, got some great presets as well that you know barely need tweaking and I've got to admit I use them a lot. So yeah, I've just got a few instances of that going throughout. Um, again, the processing isn't much, just a bit of EQ on them. Um, this one's even got a pan man, I think, just to spread it around the stereo here. Uh, but yeah, that's about it, really. Span is also a very good free tool, just a little spectrum analyzer, a meter as well. Um, also sometimes do some bus compressing like I have here I think this ozone is just a little limiter to get it up for the video um, but yeah just very subtle SSL um, bus compression here and I've even got yep a little bit of low-end compression a little multiband compression from the fub filter um, yeah and that's about about it really for the mix um, and yeah, that's about um, it for the song, really. It's not a complicated one at all, but I kind of find, for me, my best ones are quite simple. Um, again, maybe take some of the techniques with a pinch of salt. Not everything will work all the time or for your genre. Um, but I hope it was useful in some sense and you could get a bit of production knowledge. Um, and thank you for sticking around if you enjoyed it please like subscribe give me a follow if you're feeling generous um, again if you need any more technical questions answered I'm happy to answer them in the comments or give me a message or I could always make another video at some point going into it more we'll see yeah thank you for watching